Okay, these notes are states of matter notes. Okay, there are four forms of or phases of matter. We've got your solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Now the states of matter are physical states. This means that matter can go from one state to another without changing any of its chemical properties. That means that changing states or a state change, whatever you want to call it, going from solid to a liquid to a gas and back again are physical changes, not chemical changes. Anything that has mass and takes up space is called matter. Most common substances exist as solids, liquids, and gases, which have diverse chemical and physical properties. Solids, liquids, and gases are the physical forms in which all matter naturally exists on Earth. Matter can also exist as plasma, but this state is not common on Earth, so we're probably not going to talk about it in chemistry so much. Now let's talk about solids. A solid is a form of matter that has its own definite shape and volume. So let's underline that. Definite shape and volume. Um, if you think about it, I mean, solids have a, a definite shape and a definite volume. There's nothing, it doesn't change at all. So a solid does not take the shape of the container it's placed in. In fact, it usually is the container. Um, wood, iron, paper, and sugar are examples of solids. Particles in a solid are tightly packed, as you can see in the picture. Okay, let's talk about liquids. A liquid is a form of matter that flows, has constant volume, so it does have a volume, but has no definite shape. A liquid takes the shape of its container. If you think about it, when you drink something, you can't just drink it unless it's in something, okay? It doesn't have a shape, so you got to put it in a glass or put it in something that you can drink it out of. Common examples of liquids include water, blood, and mercury. Particles in a liquid are not held in place rigidly, so are able to flow past one another. So they're not as close together as a solid is. Okay, gases. A gas is a form of matter that has no definite shape and no definite volume. A gas takes the shape of its container and also fills the whole container unlike a liquid. So there's no shape, no volume, no nothing. It's basically, well, it fills the room. You can have about 20 milliliters of a gas to fill the classroom and take that same 20 milliliters and put it in a much smaller space. Okay, so it takes the shape of the container in a way, but doesn't have an actual volume. The volume changes. So some examples are helium and oxygen. Okay, so particles in a gas are very, very far apart. Now particles in a solid and a liquid are close enough together that they are not able to be compressed into a smaller volume, which is why they have a set volume. The particles of a gas, however, are far enough apart that they are able to be compressed into a smaller volume. So a gas's volume changes, whereas a solid and a liquid's cannot. Okay, let's talk about vapor. What is the difference between a gas and vapor? Gas refers to a substance that is naturally in the gaseous state at room temperature. Vapor refers to the gaseous state of a substance that is a solid or a liquid at room temperature. Oxygen, hydrogen, helium are all gases at room temperature. Water is a liquid at room temperature and turns to a gas when it has been sufficiently heated. So then it becomes water vapor. You'll never hear anybody talking about water gas. It's always water vapor, not gas. Okay, changes of state. Matter changes form or state all the time. Ice melts, water freezes, or vaporizes. Ice melting is an example of water changing from a solid to a liquid. Matter changes state by the addition or removal of heat or energy. It's probably the most important thing. Matter won't change state unless you've either added heat or taken out heat, well, energy. Okay, so melting point is the temperature at which a substance changes from solid to liquid. So going this way is melting. Freezing point is the temperature at which a substance changes from liquid to solid. It's the opposite of the melting point and are exactly the same temperature. Okay, so that's freezing. I'll put an F there and an M up here. Okay, boiling point is the temperature at which a substance changes from the liquid 
to the gaseous state. So we're going to put a B there. And then the condensation point is the temperature at which a substance changes from the gaseous state to the liquid state. Once again, it's the opposite. So condensation point is the opposite of boiling point. Now sublimation is something different altogether. Sublimation is the process by which a substance changes from the solid directly to the gaseous without ever entering liquid. So if you look at it in a little diagram, let's put this on here. Okay, it goes right from here to here and it skips that one. Um, dry ice or frozen CO2 sublimates when it is exposed to room temperature. Another thing that sub sublimates is mothballs, naphthalene. Okay, it doesn't hit the liquid state. It doesn't melt, it just kind of sublimates, becomes a vapor. Okay, change of state diagram. This is extremely important. We're gonna be using this a lot. So there's certain things I'm gonna write on here that you need to put on here. Okay, so we've got your solid right here. Um, and then here, I'm going to put this in, let's see, going this way. Energy going this way, we'll put in blue. So if you add energy in, we'll stick it in blue. But then you're also going to be taking out energy. So going the other way. Now, there's a name for each of these. So when you're adding energy in, okay, it is called endothermic endothermic okay so this is the addition of energy and then the other one is called exothermic so thinking about exo you're exiting so exothermic is taking away and I'm hoping I have enough room. Taking away energy. Okay. So when we add energy in, things go to the right, go up the diagram. When we take energy out, it comes down the diagram. Because if you notice, the temperature. So when you're adding heat, obviously, the temperature is going to go up. When you take out heat, you're putting it in like in the freezer. You're freezing it. The temperature goes down. Okay. So let's talk about these things. So here... We said going from a solid to a liquid. So this is your melting point here. Okay, and then on the opposite of the melting point is your freezing point. So we'll call that the freezing point. Okay, and then at A, so let's circle. What, what is going on at this A right here? So A, Basically, you're going to notice there's no temperature change at all. I mean, it stays the same temperature. So it stays at the melting or the freezing point, depending on which way it's going. What's happening here is, remember how closely packed those solids were? Solids were? Well, there's bonds holding those things together, or at least attractions holding those, those molecules or those atoms close together. So the energy is actually going into moving kind of think about it as as you're trying to break apart all these things take a rubik's cube you're going to take the little cubey thingies off of it you need the energy needs to break those attractions so that it becomes a liquid so that the molecules are a little further apart so that's where all the energy is going in there so um at a it's melting and freezing melting while well, melting or freezing depending on what you're talking about so we're going to take melting freezing so if you're adding heat, it's melting. If you're taking out heat, that's the actual freezing. This is when the change, the state of change or state change is going on. Okay. So that's at A. Now let's go up. We're at this little, the next one here. And after when it gets up to a liquid and it's right before it goes into a gas or a vapor, this is your boiling point. which means the one on the bottom is your condensation point. Okay, now let's talk about um, B. B is boiling 
or evaporating. So boiling or evaporating, whichever one you wanna call it, boiling and condensing. Okay, so at this point in time, there's no temp change. Okay, so the temperature once again is going into, kind of think about it as, as breaking the bonds or at least minimizing the attraction so that these molecules can just take off and become airborne. You know, they, they wanna go become gas molecules. So this is a state change only. Okay, it is not, um, that's why the temperature is not going anywhere. Um, I wanna put on here um, boiling point and we're going to also put this boiling equals because you don't always have to boil it could be evaporating too yeah oh. my kind of machine's going weird but boiling and evaporating are the same thing so you might hear me um call it interchangeably. It depends on how much boiling is when you're, you're heating something up like water, you're heating it up. But if you'll notice, if you leave a drop of water out, drop of water is not there a few hours later, or at least the next day, what happens is it's evaporating. It gets its energy, enough energy just from the room temperature alone. Okay. And because there's not a lot of moisture in the air, especially if you've got air that's got a lot less moisture, kind of does this thing. It's mainly water, but it does this thing where if it's in, um, it goes from low moisture or high moisture to low moisture. So it just kind of moves, kind of diffuses from the, wherever it's sitting on up into the air. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much what we need to talk about with this diagram, but this diagram is extremely important and I'll go over it once again in class because we're going to be taking a quiz on the diagram. There's going to be test questions on the diagram. It's a really important diagram.